Hello everyone and welcome back to my Galileo 6.4x series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. In this episode we focus on trying to do a satellite contract but that goes a little bit awry and I'll explain that in a moment. But the contract is actually to really high orbit. It's higher than geosynchronous orbit or geosynchronous orbit. Apoapsis is 45,000 kilometers and periapsis is 32,000 kilometers and uh, specifics be beyond that. I also wanted to take care of Sputnik 1 as a contract. Uh, we, we should have done that already. Uh, we already got a satellite to orbit after all. So the idea was to have the probe be the nose cone of the satellite. So we're putting a nose cone tank there and there's a tank underneath and then that's a rear guard engine and then the antennae down there. Uh, and then the probe core is sandwiched between the cone and the cylindrical tank. Also, we needed to have a probe that generates power, so we don't have solar panels yet, but we do have our fuel cells, amazingly enough. These from the universal storage pack, so somehow we unlock fuel cells first. So I put fuel cells there, hoping that that would count as electric power generation. And now this stage here with the LVT-45, uh, will be discarded unfortunately, so it's disposable. But we're going to try and recover everything else except for this stage, the long stage that you see there. Uh, to try and get enough delta V for the probe to get to the really high orbit, uh, I had to do some booster shenanigans here. So not only does the first, the lower stage, which is an SRB, have boosters next to it, but so will the second stage. So you can see there, uh, we've got the H2 boosters, the H2 SRBs that we used in the previous episode down there. Uh, one in the core and then four boosters. But then those are actually attached to the second stage boosters, which are also LVT-45s. So a complicated sort of setup, very Kerbal setup, and that's sort of the attraction of doing Galileo 6.4x for me, because there's so much delta V required and our parts are not like top-notch parts, like you'd get it realism overhaul, they're still basically uh, stockish parts, uh, so you have to make Kerbalish rockets, and of course the tech tree is limiting, we still don't have very big tanks, I couldn't make the tanks any wider than this, uh, so we were limited to 1.25 meter tanks or thereabouts, and so you see the four boosters going off, but the center SRB is still running, I thrust limited it so that it would last a little bit longer, uh, so that we could separate it uh, separately. And the reason for that is recovery of the boosters, because we've got parachutes on those SRBs and we want to recover them. This is a little bit weird because you might be worried about the LVT-45s torching the SRB, quite rightly so, but it turns out that it's alright. Uh, that's trouble for you. So here the center engine is not burning. Uh, right now it's just the four boosters on the side that are actually uh, bringing us up and doing a good job of it. But will it be enough? That's the question. There they go off, and you can see the parachutes on them. And here finally the core LVT-45, which will not be recoverable. Everything else that was separated before this is meant to be recoverable with uh, stage recovery. Parachutes though, so I mean, uh, not the most legitimate recovery scheme ever. That's the end of this stage, but we're still not in orbit yet. So we're going to rely on the probe's own fuel, which is substantial, it's like 3,000 meters per second. but. Then again, we have to go to that high orbit, which is going to require about 3,000, so already I was figuring that we were not going to make it. On the bright side, the launch did not cost that much because we did recover what we planned to recover. You can see those are the H2 SRBs that I'm going through there. Quite a lot of recoveries to uh, work our way through. And then uh, there you have an LVT-45, and a number of those boosters were recovered. So all is well as far as the funds are concerned. Here you can see me monitoring the delta V as we make orbit and it looks like we are not going to have enough to aim for the orbit that we want. We do thankfully fulfill the Sputnik 1 contract finally though. Uh, here I'm checking it out and you can see 2100 or so meters per second just to boost to target apoapsis and then we'd have to uh, lift our periapsis so not very good. Yep. Uh, but I just try and uh, go for some high orbit science, which we haven't done, right? We've got a goo container and a thermometer on here, so we're just going to boost up and try to do high over gale. And here are the goo. High over gale goo transmission doesn't give us that much science. It's pretty restrictive, but whatever we can get, we can get, so it'll be helpful 
hopefully someday we'll get tanks that are larger than 1.25 meters or so. I think it's actually, the limit is 1.5. Uh, and here's the thermometer reading. Alright, so we need to make changes. I decide to try and enlarge the size of the tanks a little bit. We have a little bit of spare thrust weight ratio to work with after all. So I figured that would be good enough. Let's see what happens. Ignition and launch. I do like how it launches. Engine lighting is very nice. Uh, if only uh, we didn't have that pause at launch, you know, where it stops a little bit for a few seconds. Uh, everything would be so much nicer. Uh, it seems to always do that. That's the downside of it. Okay, and booster separation and ignition of the LBT-45s. And after a little bit, we let go of that core SRB. I can't quite get over how Kerbal that is, and I really love it. <laughs> anyway, here we go. This is the end of these four SRBs. Not SRBs, LRBs. And the core... LVT-45. The only part that we uh, we discard. Here, let's see how it does. It's getting us a bit faster than we were before, but uh, still not all the way to orbit or anything. So back with this stage, and we'll see how much exactly we have. Uh, it probably won't be enough to get to the target orbit and circularize. You can see here We're pretty close to where we were last time. Let's see. Well, that's 2,000 meters per second to get up there, and then to circularize, it's another, not really circularize, to get to the target uh, orbit, let's say, it's about another 1,000, a total of 3,000. So I figure we don't quite have that much, but maybe we have enough to do something different. Uh, go to Gale's closest moon, which is Iota. And so here you see me plotting for IOTA, and we do have enough delta B for that, just barely. What we don't really have is a lot of electric charge, and I start to worry about that. After all, we're running the fuel cell, burning the, well, burning the hydrogen and oxygen, I guess you could say, uh, to convert it to electricity. And we have a limited supply of the hydrogen and oxygen. The trouble is our probe core can't go into hibernation mode. If we could go into hibernation mode, then we would be all right, but it can't. That's only available in more complex probe cores that we will unlock later in the tech tree. So here we have an approach, but you can see our inclination is bad, so we have to do a mid-course adjustment to try and get our inclination fixed. And knowing that I have a limited amount of electric charge, I decided to go for a collision. I tried to do a impactor on IOTA. This is the mid-course adjustment bringing our orbit to that impact. And of course there were real lunar impactors. Uh, we smacked things into the moon to take pictures along the way. We don't really have a camera on board this probe, but it would still be a, uh, a good test of our capabilities to be able to reach Iota and uh, leave a minor crater on it. So here we go. Uh, this is what I chose to do with this version of the probe. And again, we can look on the bright side. We did recover most of the rockets, so not too much by way of cost to do this. Uh, but we have, you know, to, uh, lost all electric charge. Our hydrogen and oxygen is all gone, so we can't really do science. We weren't able to do any science in uh, um, IOTA SOI. We do have that reserve power, and at this juncture, I did not know how to access that reserve power. That would have been helpful. Okay, one other piece of information I got was how many antennae I might need to maintain communication at that distance. So, yeah, that's important information. Here we've uh, got a Sputnik 2 contract, which is optional, basically the same as Sputnik 1. And uh, I picked that up, and also another satellite contract I picked up, because that one was actually closer in than the one we've already got, so I figured that would be helpful. There's also a Vanguard 1 option there, but that requires solar panels. The new satellite contract is still at around 30,000 kilometers, uh, so still Gale's synchronous orbit maybe around there, maybe a little bit higher. Uh, so I decided to revamp our upper stage, put a little bit more of a powerful engine and more Delta V. So now it's packing 4,000 instead of 3,000, you can see. Of course, that burns the lower stages, so it's not 
a pure 1000 meter per second extra but it might be enough to get to the target orbits at least by my calculations so here we go uh, quite a shadow which just makes the engine lighting all that much better in a way I mean of course ambient light adjustment is nice and all but uh, if you know you're going to ignite the engines it could be quite spectacular to have these kinds of shadows but we will need to put lights on our vehicles just uh, to get the lighting right. Ambient light adjustment is not the best solution for lighting problems. Actually putting lights is because it look, makes everything look better. But yeah, yeah that, that's uh, quite a good look at that rocket. I don't, I don't remember why I painted it blue by the way. That's the beauty of procedural parts though. Off go the boosters, LBT-45 core. And here uh, we see it doesn't have quite as much fuel as it used to. We're not getting quite as close to orbit as we did on the previous two launches. Hopefully this stage will make up for it. Here we're actually just shy of orbit. You can see the periapsis is below 112 kilometers, but we are coasting to apoapsis and I decided to check how things are shaping up. The light blue orbit is the new satellite contract, the red one was the older one you can see it it's only different in that the apoapsis of the red one is much higher so we boost up to the target orbit and we fulfilled Sputnik 2 that was sort of a trivial optional thing but we get some funds for that and of course our our recoverable stages were recovered so all is well with this particular rocket system as weird as it may be so here we go, we hit our apoapsis, you can see over 30,000 kilometers, periapsis is good after that burn, but we need to lift that periapsis by about 1,180 meters per second. The problem here is I forgot to check whether it really accepted the fuel cells as a way to generate power or not. I should have probably looked at the contract earlier. So you can see here, I reached the target orbit and I have a thermometer. It also required a thermometer for this particular satellite contract but it never checked the build a new satellite with the generating power and communications thing. Uh, we have communications that's pretty obvious since we can control it but it doesn't count the fuel cells as generating power. So I was very disappointed obviously and we'll have to wait until we get the science to unlock solar panels but in the next episode we'll turn back to launching Jeb or whoever into orbit and we will do it with a revamped version of the rocket that we tried in the previous episode. So tune in for that and I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.